Well, greetings, Facebook. It has been quite a long time since I have seen you. Greetings, in case you have never uh, came across any of my videos, I am Prophetess Ray A. Doswell. It is a blessing to be able to come before you at the very end of 2021. I have a prophetic word, and I have God's permission to come on here and to release this. Please forgive me if my phone is moving, but I'm having some technical difficulties with I guess activating the camera on the computer so I have to hold this but let me give you this word and like always all prophetic words you take it before the Lord the Holy Spirit make sure it never violates God's logos and it always must confirm in your spirit okay but this is the word of the Lord that he gave me and it coincides if you go on my page it says that 2022 it is the year of God's sword and when we think of the word sword we get that from the book of Ephesians 6 his word but what people don't understand is that God is his word and his word is him and we are about to see a demonstration of his word manifest in the earth touching all things so this is the word the, the word sword it's referenced once again it means God's word from the book of Ephesians 6 the sword cuts and it is going to cut out anything that is not like God in us personally. This is going to happen systematically and religiously. That means the structure of the church and in governments. His word is going to dismantle, indicating taking down what is not meant to be mounted by God's divine design in positions of leadership and structures. God's reproof is coming in 2022. That means that he's going to rebuke what is not like him that goes against his agenda. He is going to rebuke through further stern warnings, even um, distributing more consequences for clergy, for leaders, for organizations, and for governments. In 2022, you are going to see the hand of the Lord refine. What does it mean to refine? What can we expect from God in 2022? It means to polish what is capable of being polished. In other words, his refine means that he can fix what needs to be fixed, even in people, because he, God knows all things. He knows people, and he knows people who are going to turn, and he also knows people who are not going to turn. But when there is hope that people can turn, that means that God can um, refine. He can make over again, okay? In 2022, you are going to see the hand of the Lord for those who will turn. He will give them the chance to be corrected, to learn, to learn from error. If there is a heart, a sincere heart, you will literally see the hand of grace. Allow people to be corrected and turn so that they can get it right, so that they can fulfill his requirements in the earth. This is going to happen inside the church, and this is going to happen outside. However, in 2022, you are going to see the hand of God cut what cannot be refined? What does that mean? That means that there is a direct order coming down from God where he just cuts leaders. He cuts structures. Do you know that the hand of the Lord is getting ready to cut even the wicked having access to luxury? because of sin and because of rebellion and because of disobedience. God can be so good to a people. He can be so good to a nation. But because we won't repent, we begin to lose some of the pleasures that we enjoy because of sin. Sin will always separate you from the will of the Lord. Okay. In 2022, you are also going to see the hand of the Lord remove remove yes god is going to remove leaders that means clergy you're going to see him remove people especially in organizations guess what else you're going to see god remove some of the stubbornness that has been inside of us issues that we have not dealt with we're going to have a confrontation with it through the holy spirit where the spirit of the lord is going to say you know what that attitude right there, that way of thinking right there, I need to remove that from you because you cannot take that into the next chapter and what I'm trying to do in your life, okay? So expect that, a removal of people, a removal of how things have 
back on in systems and organizations, but also a removal of attitudes and mindsets that we as had as believers in relationships where God says, no, that will not work. It must go. Okay. The other thing that's coming, he gave me this was the removal of his breath. What does that mean? The only reason why you and I woke up even today, it is because of the breath that he breathes in our lungs, in our heartbeats. It's God's breath. But do you know that when an expiration comes, he takes his breath away. And there are some, they are literally, I mean, they are at the end of grace that God is just, it, he's been long suffering, but he's saying my breath, my breath is coming for an expiration in some where they just won't turn. And so he begins to take the breath of way is appointed for all men and women. We will all step into eternity, but there are those you guys that because of sin, because of disobedience, because they will not comply. His breath is taken away. Okay. So that's different than just reaching your expiration and the Lord just takes us home. Okay. Let me keep going here. I pray that you guys are doing well. Um, let's see. The other thing that the Lord is going to be dealing with is the removal of wicked powers, the removal of of wicked powers. Yes, you're going to see an increase of a new world order. It's set. It's a fulfillment of scripture, but you're also going to see the hand of the Lord counteract wicked powers that rise up against the righteous, that rise up against the remnant. And you're going to see the interventions of God through angelic hosts, through angels, but also through God's hand himself, defending the righteous, making a way out of no way for the righteous. Okay, let's keep going here. Um, you're going to expect, expect, I'm sorry, tongue twister, expect more severe judgments to come down on the wicked in the house of God and in systems and in governments that's coming. Masses of exposure is coming even more once again for the Christian and the non-Christian. Okay. God does not toil with man. Always. We, we read that in the word of God. He does not toil with man always. So for therefore the expiration of grace to be able to turn the expiration to even live where it comes to an end, expect that because that is coming 2022 it is a checkmate year if any of you know about the game of chess and this is the year 2022 this year is more serious than the one we just came out of and yes it was a trying year I don't care how long you've been walking with the Lord. I don't care how educated you are. I don't care how long you've operated in business and ministry. 2021 was one of the most trying years for all of us. Some of us experienced death of people that we loved. We saw the attack of relationships. We went through crisis um, in our careers and different things. But guess what? Did he not preserve us through it all? He did. He preserved us through it all. So just know in 2022, it is a checkmate year by the hand of the Lord. What does that mean? That means that there is a hand that many have not discerned that God will play. And he needs no man's permission in order to play this hand. And he will play this hand. He's going to play this hand in the righteous. And he's also going to play it a hand of judgment. Do you remember years ago, maybe 2017, remember I said, it's the best of times, but it's the worst of times. And on one side, we will see catastrophic things, but on another side, you will see the blessings of the Lord. The same is true in 2021, but oh, there is a hand that the father Yahweh El Danai is about to play and no wicked person, no person can alter a hand that the Lord decides to play. What does that mean? That means that for people, for systems, for even demonic spirits that have decided that they would oppose the agenda of God. There is a hand coming that just says, cut. I've had enough. No, the devil and demons and people will not be able to stop us from going forward, even in the midst of 
catastrophic events, things with the earth, the plates, the weather, a pandemic, we will see the sovereignty and the faithfulness of God to play a hand of intervention on behalf of the righteous. Know that it's a season of restoration for those who have been faithful to him in the midst of storms, adversity, tragedy, setbacks, you will see the restoration of God, even in the midst of judgments that will continue because they're going to keep continuing. But why they're, they're playing out in front of us. There are areas in our life that God has promised to restore and he will do exactly what he said he would do, what he spoke in Rhema, but also what he spoke in his word logos because he watches over his word to perform it he's not a man that he should lie nor is he the son of man to have to ever repent to no man because he is god he is god and he is god alone and he will restore those areas that have been so ransacked by evil know that but you must put your faith in him, not in people, not in prophets, not in bishops, not in apostles, not in movements. No, your faith must be rooted and grounded in him, in his word. And a part of restoration, it requires sometimes our level of responsibility. Sometimes you have to co-partner with God in order to be restored. It means that you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. Stop listening to people and listen to him in those areas. Sometimes restoration happens because the Holy Spirit is trying to direct you to a new place, to a new assignment, to new relationships, to different things. But if we don't listen, guess what? We don't get restored. Sometimes when things have failed and God has promised you that he was going to fix it, a part of the restoration is going back to the foundation and saying, Father, it didn't work out. It's messed up. What do I do? What do I need to do to get it right? A part of restoration lies on our obedience to comply with what he's saying. Let me give you the rest because I don't have um, much time. Correction is coming. Correction is coming from God in 2022. What does that mean? Once again, there's going to be a confrontation of error within us and systems and in church. It's his will versus our will. What do we want versus, but what does God want? So God is coming to bring correction, okay? Um, however, there is an order being implemented within us and also in structures, in system, if we will allow the correction of God to clean us up, which is going to happen on many levels, especially in the body of Christ and our relationships. There are new forms of training coming all across different denominations where God is getting ready to charge leaders. In other words, he's given them an assignment to come up higher, higher in accountability in terms of how they're training leaders among clergy to be restored because this will restore the reputation of the church and the credibility of, of what the word of God is among church leaders. Because as you and I both know, clergy, it has a tainted reputation in the world across denominations where people are judging God and basing not having a relationship with him because of the era of how people who have represented him have lived in the body of Christ as leaders. So you're going to begin to see God visit leaders on training clergy to be ethical, to have a strong biblical foundation, to evaluate their personal lives. Okay. All right. So, and that's going to improve the perception of who Christ is because we role model who Jesus is. You role model him in organizations. You role model Jesus in relationships. You role model Jesus in communities. Remember, you take your light and you shine it up on a hill. Why? Because we are the salt of the earth. But if we are corrupt, if we are unethical, we live unmoral, we have no standards, no boundaries, we don't even practice biblical principles, how will the world really know the Jesus, the Yahweh that we serve? So God is coming for that correction in that area, okay? Um, let's see here, I had so much he had given me, you guys. Oh, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Remember this, he gave this word months ago, 
Ungodly leaders, ethical leaders, do not surround themselves or their ministries around crooked leaders. No, they don't. It's unbiblical. Nor do they compromise the word of God intentionally, nor do they compromise it because of the pressures of man-made systems, okay? So understand that as we move forward. God's leaders in the future, you're going to see this more and more, surround themselves around men and women who actually fear God. They don't surround themselves around people because you're popular, because you're known, you have a network. No, godly leaders surround themselves around people who fear and reverence who the Lord is. They are not comfortable being around crooked leadership. So pay attention to that. When you see leaders, but yet they're surrounded around questionable leaders, what is that? A lack of character. So why would you follow leaders who are lacking character? Okay? All right. So... Okay, thank you, Lord. The other thing the Lord gave me was to remind you guys once again, remember he said this, stock up on food. Stock up. He said that. Remember, it still stands. The Lord also wants you guys to know that his sword, his sword will even touch the earth's crust. So we need to get prepared. We need to get prepared for that. Remember, he warned about the weather months ago. He warned about it months ago. The other thing the Lord wanted me to bring back to your attention was how many of you were on here when the Lord gave me a word, 2000, maybe 19 and 20, and he said that there was a spirit of insanity in the earth and that we would begin to see people do things and it's going to play out on the news that we had never, ever seen before. Did you guys not witness that unfold? So what does that mean? That spirit is still running rampant, which is why you're seeing some of the behaviors that you're seeing. But this is the charge we have as believers. We are to pray over our cities, over our, our nation. We are to bind and bring down demonic spirits and, and, and bring spirits into captivity that are over the minds of people. Okay. So events will continue to unfold. And God also, for some reason, wants us to pay attention to Europe. He had given me this months ago, but he brought it back again. He said to pay attention to system changes, okay? And also, get this, Christian, because you're going to see this. We see this taking place right now, is that an opposing governmental orders for Christians, that's going to continue. But guess what? Remember he said, my hand is going to come down and I'm going to deal with the powers of evil when it comes to my body, my people. Why? Because God's, God's agenda is more powerful than Satan's agenda. God will not be mocked. No man, no new world order will override the calendar of the most high God. No demon in hell, no witch, no warlock, no prince, no power will stop what God himself has set in order to do in the earth. God's will will always prevail, even against the will of Satan, even against the will of systems, because he is God. He is creator and every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow and say he alone is the Lord God Almighty because he's a soon coming king and he's coming back for a victorious church, not a defeated church, not a church plagued by sin and disobedience and carnality, but he's coming back for a church that will stand on the banner of Jesus Christ and uphold his holy name and go into systems like Daniel and Hadessa and take it for his kingdom, for his glory. So no matter what they create, no matter what they try, get this in your spirit in 2022 that we serve God and he holds the world up with one of his hands, not two. He knows the ins and the outs of all creation. Every move that Satan is making and whatever move he decides to counteract, he will do it because he is God. So know that in 2022, 22, that he is a defender of the righteous. He is a way maker out of no way. He will cause a ram to come in a bush when people will not comply and do what they're supposed to do in your life. He is God. 
You need to know that. You need to rise up against this pandemic. You need to bind it in the name of Jesus and decree and declare that it will not touch anyone in your home in the name of Jesus. You need to plead the blood over your finances. You need to plead the blood over your ministries. You need to plead the blood over your living situation. He is God. He is God and he rules and he reigns. He is God. No matter what they're doing in systems, he's God. Get that in your spirit. You serve the most high God and there is none like him in all the earth. He is Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Teskinu. He is the Lord of righteousness. He is Elohim. He is El Danai. He is the great I am, the beginning and the end. And all things will bow to his power, to his glory, to his command in our lives. And you have to believe that in the name of Jesus. He is God in 2022. He just wants us to be alert to what's coming. But we are not to focus on so many aspects of society and different things that we forget that we are to keep our focus on him. Keep our focus in his word. It is his word that cuts it is his word that heals. It is his word that exposes. Because you know what? He is his word. He is his word. And he is faithful no matter what we've had to endure. And we choose to serve him until he comes. Because we're looking for a crown one day. Because see, it's all about him and his agenda in 2022. Though we're going to see many things unfold. Don't you forget this. He is God. And there's none like him in all the earth. Anything else, Father God? Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Ooh. In 2000, I got really excited, you guys. In 2021, as we're ending, the Lord gave me this for many Christians. He said, instead of being mature, concerning your brother and your sister in, in Christ, when they got attacked, whether it was in their careers, in their finances, maybe things didn't go so well in ministries. Many Christians, instead of being mature, you made fun of some of his people. You talked about them. You gossiped about their marriages. Oh, the Lord says you grieve the Holy Ghost. You grieved the Holy Ghost because your brother and your sister was being viciously attacked. And what God is charging us in 2022, you need to repent for that childish behavior. It's ungodly to sit and talk about your brothers and sisters who face storms and who have opposition. A mature believer intercedes. You pray. You should want your brother and sister to get the victory, not use what they're going through as a place of gossip and slander. The Lord says, repent. It's an open rebuke. Repent. That's childish, immature behavior. When you see your brothers and sisters go through, you don't get on phones and just talk about them. No, intercede for them. Pray for them. Because a house divided, it can't stand. It can't stand. That's the part of that personal reproof, rebuke, to deal with that childish behavior the gossip, the slandering. You will never be trusted with people when you live your life as a believer and all you do is gossip and slander about people, but you're not mature enough to pray and war on their behalf, okay? So I love you guys in Jesus. And if you sow intercession, if you sold intercession in 2021, you prayed for your brother, you labored, you warred, you walked the floor. May I tell you something? In 2022, there's a reward for that godly behavior. I love you guys in Jesus. Be blessed. Bye-bye.